Hello, welcome back. All right, we are going to be talking right now about barotropic versus baroclinic conditions. And we're going to be looking at how we can look at a section from the Gulf Stream and understand whether it is barotropic or baroclinic. So to start this, we have the schematics showing barotropic conditions on the left and baroclinic conditions over here on the right. So a barotrop barotropic conditions exist in the ocean when the water is well mixed. So then the density is going to be homogeneous. So in this case right here, if you have some sort of slope in the sea surface, whatever that slope in the sea surface is, all of the isobars, the levels of equal pressure, will be parallel to the sea surface, and all of the isopycnals, or the levels of equal density, will also be parallel to the sea surface. Now, the density is indeed increasing with depth, as is the pressure, but these lines are parallel to the sea surface, and they do not cross. On the other hand, we have, can have baroclinic conditions. Baroclinic conditions exist when there are lateral differences in the density. So in this case right here, it says the water on average is less dense on this side, and the water on average is more dense on this side. And we can see that by looking at our isopycnal lines. So if I look at this isopycnal line, I see that it is sloping up and to the right. That means that all along this line, anywhere I go along this line, it has the same density. So it's the same density here as it is here. And I know that the density increases with depth. So in that case, <clears throat> if I look at this depth right here, I know that the density at this depth is, is greater than the density at this depth. Now, the isobars initially are following the sea surface. However, as we go down deeper and deeper, the fact that the, there is this change in density is going to affect our isobars as well, because the pressure is not only affected by the height of the sea surface, but it can also be affected, but it's affected in, in general by the mass of the water above it, and so it will also be affected by the density. So it will start to flatten out as we get lower, as we can see right here. And what ends up happening in the case of a baroclinic conditions is the isobars cross or are inclined to, the clin, if that helps you think of it, the isopycnals. So if the isopycnals are sloping up and to the right in general, as they are here, then the isobars in general will be sloping up and to the left. To look at another schematic, Again, we have our barotropic conditions on the left, our baroclinic conditions on the right. So in the barotropic conditions, the density this is a homogeneous, well-mixed part of the ocean. It's homogeneous, so the density does not change between points A and points B. In that case, the isobars, again, are going to follow any slope that there is in the sea surface and be parallel and that they will maintain this angle all the way to the bottom. And the isopycnals will be parallel as well. Now, if the sea surface is sloping up and to the right, and the isobars are up and to the right, that means that the pressure gradient is to the right, and so the pressure gradient force is going to be pointing to the left because it points away from the pressure gradient because a ball, we know, rolls downhill. Now, if the pressure gradient force is pointing to the left and we are in geostrophic balance, that means that the Coriolis force must be pointing 
in the exact opposite direction, which in this case would be to the right. So if Coriolis is pointing to the right and we are in the Northern Hemisphere, then our geostrophic current must be going into the page and that's what it's doing. So our geostrophic current goes into the page and since it's determined by this, the slope of our isobars that is giving us our pressure gradient force, since that's not changing, it is constant with depth. Now let's look over here at our baroclinic conditions. In our baroclinic conditions, we see that in this case over here, we have um, the isopycnals are sloping up to the left and the isobars are sloping up to the right. So the sea surface is going up to the right, but the density is actually increasing to the left. So in this case, we see that the density at A is going to be greater than the density at B. So in barotropic flow, the densities were equal and the geostrophic current was constant with depth. Now, in our baroclinic flow, the density is greater at A than it is at B in this case. And we see that the isobars are not maintaining that same slope, but are starting to flatten out. And if they flatten out, that means that our geostrophic flow, which again, of course, is still going to be into the page because our isobars are up and to the right, that geostrophic flow will decrease with depth. So that gives us our baroclinic flow. All right, let's look at another schematic. So in this schematic, we again have our barotropic flow on the left and our baroclinic flow on the right. And what we see here is that the isobars in barot on our barotropic flow maintain the same angle. They maintain the same slope as we go down in depth. And so our, our velocity of our geostrophic velocity will also be the same as we decrease in depth. However, if we look at our, so the, in the barotropic fluid, the isobars follow the sea surface. In the baroclinic fluid, the isobars follow the sea surface less and less with depth. And at some point, so it starts to decrease, this angle gets smaller. And it starts to decrease all the way to the point that the at some point gets to a level of no motion, gets all the way down to being zero. So at some point we have no slope at all. So we have no pressure gradient force. And so we will get all the way down to having zero ge geostrophic flow. All right, now let's look at our examples. So this is from figure 4.12 in your text. These are measurements of the Gulf Stream for an east-west section in the narrowest parts of the Straits of Florida. This first figure right here is showing the temperature distribution in degrees Celsius. Figure B is showing the salinity distribution. Figure C is giving us the current, that computed current in meters per second, so it's computed. Uh, based on geostrophic flow. And figure D is giving us the observed current in meters per second. So that's actually observed, measured current. All right, so let's point out a few things. The first thing we see when we're looking at the temperature is that the temperature, as you would expect, decreases with depth. So the temperature is getting uh, cooler and cooler with depth, which is what we would expect because that means that the density is increasing so we would have a stable water column. The salinity, however, is doing something a little more strange. So we have a lower salinity here at less than 36.1. This is our 36.1 isohaline. 
This is our 36.2 isohaline. So the salinity is increasing. So that would be that would be stable. We get we get all the way to this this isohaline right here of 36.5. And this one isn't marked, but that would be 36.6. However, below that, now this is where that that isohaline of 36.4 comes back. So here we have less saline water below more saline water. And as we see, if we just look at the big numbers here, we've got 36 dropping to 35.5, all the way down to 35.0. So we have less saline water below more saline water. So this would be unstable if the salinity were controlling the density. Now we know that this, that this is a stable situation, so, and we're in the mid-latitudes, so in the mid-latitudes, the temperature usually does control the density. So the first thing we see by looking at this is that the temperature distribution is what is controlling our density. All right. So now let's try to understand a little bit more about what's going on in these profiles. So the first thing that we want to do is I think the easiest way to look at the temperature is to just follow right along on one of our, iso our iso isotherms, our constant temperatures. And so this is pointing out uh, that the 10 degree isotherm is much, much lower on the right side of our image and much higher on the left side of our image. So there's a big difference between the temperature on the left side and the temperature on the right side. Similarly, if we look at the salinity, and I picked out here, we'll follow the isohaline, the 35.0 isohaline. It is much, that, that isohaline line is at a much shallower depth on the left side and at a much deeper depth on the right side. So this tells us that there is a big lateral difference in density since it's the temperature and the salinity that will be controlling our density. So there is a big lateral difference in density between the right side and the left side of our images here. So that's one clue. Another clue that we get by looking at this is we see that our current, both the computed current and the observed current, are decreasing with depth all the way down to zero. So we have um, greater current speed at the top of our water column and going all the way down to zero near the bottom. So these are all indications that what we have here, right, so our, our current is decreasing to zero meters per second. And as we saw before, when we have strong lateral differences in density, where we have one side that's denser than the other side, and we have current that is decreasing with depth, those are indications that we have baroclinic conditions. All right, so now what we want to figure out with our barrel, in our barrel clinic conditions that we have is in which direction does the sea surface slope? Well, in order to answer that question, what we need to think about is in which direction do the isopycnals slope? And to figure out which direction the isopycnals slope, we need to figure out what happens to the density. And we know that the temperature is what's controlling the density since the temperature is getting cooler with depth. So since the temperature is getting cooler with depth, and we already looked at our 10 degree isotherm and saw that it is at a much shallower depth um, on the left side than it is on the right side. That tells us another way to look at this is if we go ahead and draw a straight line. So I drew a straight line here right at 200 meters depth. And at that straight line, I can see that the temperature over here on the left side is between the nine degree isotherm and the 10 degree isotherm. Now the temperature over here at 200 meters depth on the right side 
is right at that 20 degree isotherm. So it is much warmer on the right side than it is on the left side. Since the temperature controls the density, that tells us that it is denser. The waters on the left side are denser than the waters on the right side. So in order to have uh, denser water on the left side than on the right side, our isopycnals must be sloping up and to the left. If our isopycnals slope up and to the left, and we can see that they are in fact intersecting with the sea surface, that means up here at the top, the iso, uh, isotherms are intersecting with the sea surface, which is our top isobaric line or our top isobar. That means that the isobars and the sea surface must be sloping in the opposite direction. So that if the isopycnals slope up and to the left, the sea surface must slope up and to the right. Okay. Now, if the sea surface slopes up and to the right, if it's sloping up and to the right here, that tells us that our pressure gradient force, because as we know, must roll, our balls roll downhill, must be going to the left. So pressure gradient force will be going to the left. And if the pressure gradient force points to the left, then <clears throat> then what we see is that the Coriolis force must point to the right in order to have our geostrophic flow. And if Coriolis points to the right in our diagram, and we know that we are here in the Northern Hemisphere, we're talking about the Gulf Stream, then Coriolis must point to the right of the direction of flow, and so our flow must be into the page. And Florida is over here on the left, and the Bimini Islands are over here on the right. All right, so now the next question we want to look at is, does the sea surface simply slope up to the right? or does it do something a little more complex? Well, to answer that, we wanna look again at our temperature profile here. And we see that right there in the middle, that is where we have the warmest water. We have this warm water that's coming down. And if we follow the isopycnal around it on either side, we see that on either side, we have cooler water. Similarly, if we look at our salinity profile right in the middle, we see that we have the least saline water. So right in the center, right in the middle of these profiles, we have the warmest, least saline water. So it is going to be the least dense, and we're going to have a little elevated area here. The sea surface is not going to be uh, just simply sloping up and to the right. Something else that gives us a clue is if we look at our current. And our current also has this, uh, this increase right in the center, right in the middle of our profile. And so that gives us an indication that the sea surface is not just simply slipping up into the right, but actually has a more complex shape. And so we see that it's not just up into the right, but actually has a hump in the middle of the section. All right, I hope that made some things more clear about barotropic and baroclinic conditions and how we can use those to understand flow in the Gulf Stream.